it is well it is well with my soul can you help us just sing that just one more time just the chorus it is well with my soul my soul it is well with my soul amen 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 that is my testimony, and I'm sticking to it. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, that your people may hear from you on high, and let it be a blessing unto their souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson actually comes from Luke 6, 17 through 26 this morning. That is Luke 6, 17 through 26. And it reads, and the caption begins, Blessings and Woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. This is part of the See All the People worship series. And the title of the sermon is The Expectant Crowd. It's the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany. And our scripture reading was Luke 6, 17 through 26. So it begins, let's engage this text first through the eyes of Jesus, who encourages a large crowd made up of his disciples and many people from all over the region. And looking at the crowd, Jesus saw that they were made up of people who were disciples, while others were his faithful followers, and still others were people who knew about Jesus. These people not only wanted to see Jesus, they desired to hear Jesus and to be healed of their various ailments. 
The writer chooses to use the word crowd, which suggests that there were many people gathered around Jesus. To be sure, Jesus was accustomed to being surrounded by lots of people. There's many characteristics of a crowd, and we can gain some insight here by looking at a few such characteristics of crowd mentality. First, when a person becomes part of a crowd, there's anonymity. You can kind of get lost in the crowd and no one really knows you. Such anonymity allows the members of a crowd to act as though they don't know each other. This perhaps lets each person um, have a certain freedom to act on his or her own as they will. Second, genuinely speaking, behavior in a crowd is usually emotional and impulsive. For example, all the people tried to touch Jesus. They exercised their freedom to claim a portion of Jesus' power by touching him. Being faceless in the crowd allowed them to drop any personal inhibition that might have pre prevented them from touching Jesus. And then third, a crowd often becomes impersonal, losing its individuality. In this story, the crowd began to act as a group coming to Jesus and receiving his ministry. It's important to examine the text by noting a special characteristic of the crowd. This was not an ordinary crowd. They weren't angry or unruly. This was an expectant crowd. They were looking forward to something. They were full of anticipation because they knew that since Jesus had previously healed sick people, surely he could and would heal them. Their expectation was threefold. They wanted to see Jesus and they wanted to hear his comforting words, but most of all, they wanted to be made whole. Jesus did not limit his healing ministry to physical health. He also cured people who were troubled by impure spirits. Today, we might think of this as anxiety or challenges with mental health. He also cured people who visually had ailments, but can you see the excitement that was granted by Jesus' miraculous activities? Think about the scene at that time. How would you describe it? Last week we heard about the pressing crowd that came to see Jesus. Soon here at Bryce Church, we'll have an opportunity to have our own pressing crowd, an opportunity to have fish or people literally jumping into our nets. Amen. We'll have a pressing crowd as parents and family members come out to see their children in Bryce Academy's upcoming Easter play. Thanks, Jeff, for your daughter. If you're able to come out and be the hands and feet of Jesus, what comforting words can you offer our guest? How might you minister to those who are troubled, ill, or have emotional concerns? How might you offer comfort, support, care, 
The excitement and invitation will be instantaneously generated by the children's play. How might you help to meet the expectation? Back to our sermon topic, pause for a moment and note that all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came from him and healed them all. Here we see the power of a touch. The people touch Jesus rather than being touched by Jesus. There was a transfer of spiritual power and energy. The people not only expected to see Jesus, they expected to be healed by Jesus. Their expectation was based on their belief in the power of Jesus to heal the sick. The release of spiritual energy from Jesus was initiated by outstretched hands of the ones who touched him. When we pray for others, why do we ask if we can touch them or maybe hold their hands? This passage of scripture is commonly known as the Sermon on the Plain. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place. The location on a level plain suggests that Jesus assumed a vantage point of equality. In this position, he was not above the people, he could maintain good eye contact, he could readily look out and see who's in the crowd, who's in the crowd. Jesus from this vantage point could read the faces of the people, he could read their body language, he also could sense their expectations, allowing him to prepare himself to respond to their needs appropriately. No doubt this crowd was not unlike the crowds of people that come to our churches and the crowds that stay away from our churches. This crowd of people came to Jesus with open hearts, minds, seeking open doors. Deep in their hearts, they felt that Jesus would empathize with them. Jesus would say, I got you. Their minds were open to the possibility that Jesus might lead them through his teaching to a new way of living. Finally, they wanted to be welcomed into the doors of Jesus' ministry. Jesus accepted the people in the crowd just as they were. Considering this fact, looking at ourselves, are we willing to accept our neighbors who have not yet come to our churches? while ministering to our current congregation. Perhaps there's some similarities between the crowd on the plain and the crowds that come to our churches. When you look out into our congregation, who do you see? What are their needs? Who are the people who come to our churches? Do they reflect the neighborhoods around the church? Surely they are folks who want to hear a word from the Lord and they want to be healed. They come with certain expectations. 
Is our congregation characterized by open hearts, open minds, open doors? Who are the people that don't come to our church? Do we truly welcome all people regardless of their sexual orientation or other differences? And we know that the General Conference of the United Methodist Church will soon be grappling with this matter in a special called session. Like Jesus, we're called to accept people as they are and to strive to develop a Christian relationship with them. Not only did Jesus heal people, he also taught the people. Jesus perceived their unexpressed needs. Looking into the eyes of his disciples, he taught them about the many ways in which they were blessed. God will bless the people in spite of their status when they align themselves with Jesus. You might be rejected, but rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Also in this sermon, Jesus issues a warning to those who are rich and comfortable. He talks about a series of woes signaling the possibility of deep suffering, misfortune, and grief. A life of discipleship is not about popularity, rather it is about living the truth that Jesus teaches us. It's better to give your life away in service, just as Jesus shared his spirit with those who touched him and believed in his teaching. In conclusion, the Sermon on the Plain was delivered on a plain at the foot of a mountain. Our text is couched in this sermon. There are some similarities between the Sermon on the Plain and the Sermon on the Mount. The Luke emphasis however, is on sympathy with the poor and a duty of spiritual kindness. Just as God seeks us, Jesus wants us to seek God with open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Surely, God wants us to see all of the people in the crowd and to minister to them with fidelity and grace. Indeed, if you look, you will be able to see him if you want to see them. With Jesus, there are no hidden figures. May God add a blessing to the words that have gone forth. And now at this time in our sermon, we invite any in the congregation, in the sanctuary, that may not know the Lord in his resurrection power. If there be one, won't you come? Receive Jesus into your heart. Allow the church to take your hand and to walk with you in this faith life. If there's one, won't you come? And if there will not be one, we will have our closing song. It is well? Is that, no? It is well. Slightly different version. We, yeah. we get to uh, do it again with a different version. When we looked at this song, we really wanted to do it. And then I said, uh-oh, look what the choir's singing. Uh, it, was, it was not my 
vision, but it had to be God's vision. So the words are in your um, bulletin as well as on the screen, yay. And if you'll stand, we'll sing together, it is well. Has quaked before, moved by the sound of his voice. Our shaken and stirred can be calm and broken for my regard. Through it all. mountains that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. So 
Bless me.